I recently read this Oshinoko art book done by manga artist Mango Yokoyari. There are so many things I like about her art, so in this video, I want to do some study using this book to see if I can learn something. I only watched the anime, so it's really informative to see the original illustrations. They were used for manga book covers, shonen jump specials, and other special promotional events. My first impression of the book is that it's so colorful, exactly what I expected to see of her art. The layout and the quality of this book is really good. All pages are full color, there are many large full page illustrations organized by character. What I really like about the art is that although they are colorful, it's not messy or chaotic. It's very easy on my eyes. The color combinations just work, and there are many unusual color choices. I always feel digital artists have a lot more freedom of using bright, highly saturated colors, but maybe that's a myth. I want to try to recreate this look in watercolor. Let's see if it works for me. Like this one I'm doing. The hair color is so pretty. This is Akane, and the character design has dark blue hair. In this painting though, her hair color is much lighter and very colorful, but mostly a greenish blue. I wouldn't have thought of using a muted pink in the back as a contrast, but it works so well. This small change makes the character glow, exuding warmth. Could it be the reflection from her pink tone sweater, or a representation of the universe of possibilities residing within her? It's interesting that Yokoyari says she really likes weird shaped clothes. This sweater definitely fits that description. By the way, there's a whole section of the book for Yokoyari Sensei's comment for all of the illustrations. I had to read them with Google Translate page by page. It was slow, but I really enjoyed it. For example, Yoko Yari says she drew this picture to remind us that Ruby is a very beautiful girl. It's a good refresher since in the current season, season 2, at least up to now, Ruby hasn't shown up much at all. I didn't really have much of a collection of her from season 1, probably because she's overshadowed by eye, but the color combinations in this picture is so unique. I love how she's able to use color this way. This is something I can try too, be more bold with my color usage. And for this one, Yokoyari likes high saturation colors. She purposely uses neon green as she noticed not many manga covers are as saturated. Actually, that's true. When we were browsing in the bookstore, her manga covers do a great job grabbing our attention. I remember in one of the stores, the first few manga volumes were displayed together, and the neon gloves are so distinct it just demands a second look. And for this one, she says she drew this one really quickly under a time crunch, and she couldn't even look back at it herself. But I really like it! It's not as polished as other ones for sure. The brush strokes are fast, and you can tell some area is not completely filled. But they carry the energy and the motion. The white areas look like reflection and lights. And I think because of the rougher strokes, it actually conveys more of the movement. Well, that, and she's super skilled at drawing and shading.
In many places, Yoko Yari mentioned that she doesn't remember how she drew or colored something. I'm kind of relieved to hear that. Even professionals doing digital art don't have a tried and true step-by-step -step system. My favorite medium is watercolor, and is famous for being hard to control, leading to a lot of randomness. At the beginning, when I just started, I hated this. I was so determined that I must learn to control it. So I spent hours and hours fail and trying to practice, trying to control by changing the brush stroke, the amount of water on my brush, um, how wet the paper is, how smooth the paper is, trying to get all the colors sitting perfectly within the lines with the perfect gradation of color changes. But after I finally managed to do that, I found it boring. It lost its spontaneity and I didn't enjoy it anymore. I can't enjoy the process if I use watercolor this way. Then I finally figured out what I really love about watercolor is its spontaneity, its uncertainty. I think I just need to relax and play along and enjoy the surprises that comes out of it. This makes the painting such an exciting experience because I never know how the final artwork will come out and whether I'll be able to recreate it next time. All right, this painting is almost done. I'm amazed how good this color combination looks, especially around her hair. I purposely left her left eye unpainted because I feel it could go well with the glowy pink in her hair. And the strands, wow. I'm gonna be so much bolder in my color choices in the future and not be lazy. Sometimes I just pick one color and stick to it and don't bother changing it. And look at the sweater. This color reminds me of gummies. It just feels so juicy. The other important thing I learned is the outlines or the occasionally applied ink lines. I was always against using an outline because I feel it kills the looseness. But what if I can make the lines themselves loose? This is what I want to experiment. And after this, I think I'm on the right track. I'll keep trying this for sure. And I think they can be better placed on Akane. The next one I want to study is Kana. I really like the contrast between the background and the character in this one. I always have trouble doing really dark backgrounds, so I want to do better. There's just nothing to replace the look of a pure black background, but it's hard to do in watercolor because it needs water and it'll become translucent. So for black, when I dilute it with water, it becomes gray. Also, it's dangerous to paint around the character because it's very easy to accidentally get the dark paint mixed into the already painted character. From reading Yokoyari sensei's comment, I learned that she wanted to make it like Kana can do anything. She can change with a flip of a switch. I think she totally conveyed this feeling. I love doing character with different expressions. Manga drawing is so unique in a sense that the artists are always on a tight deadline, but still are able to represent the infinite number of expressions. I think it works because it mainly comes from the combination of different shapes and nuances of the eyes eyebrows, and mouth. And there are so many subtle differences for these three features. For example, a slightly different angle in the eyebrow can completely change the look of the face from smiling to being embarrassed. Kana, in this one, with her eyes slightly closed and mouth ajar, gives me the feeling that she's looking past you as if she's eyeing a goal far away in the distance that we haven't even comprehend yet. The background with a multitude of colors and stars, as if we're in the middle of the universe, makes the whole composition feel very grand. The large area of white is a very bold choice. I think it gives a beautiful contrast to the darker areas.
Another manga artist who does expressions really well is Aka Akasaka. He's the original creator of Oshinoko, and he's the creator for the well received manga Kaguya sama Love is War. This is another romantic anime that I really enjoyed. Kaguya has two different sides of her one is super intelligent and cold, one is childlike and very girly. Akasaka used so many different faces to portray her two contrasting sides, balancing them so perfectly to make the character feel alive yet very likable. The fact that Akasaka Sensei is the original creator was a surprise to me. I saw this page and I was confused why Kaguya is in this art book. From what I read, Akasaka and Yokoyari share ideas and work really well together. This collab drawing, Akasaka drew Kaguya, but was trying to match Yokoyari's coloring style. Also, this one, I in her classic pose. Akasaka provided some ideas and Yokoyari took it to address the original illustration, and it became such a symbolic piece. It must be so much fun to work with another manga artist who understands your train of thought, where you can bounce ideas off of each other, and it's like communication with drawings, I guess. The last few pages of the book have a transcript of an interview with both artists. Their discussion on the characters is truly enlightening. For this painting, I think the experiment with the dark background worked well. That's the main thing I wanted to practice, so I'm pretty happy with the result. Although I could have pre mixed some darker blue and purple ink instead of just dropping black ink and mixing them on paper. I mean, mixing them on paper gives me those nice patterns, but to keep those patterns, I couldn't do too much mixing with the brush, so some darker areas are really black. Also, my skill of flicking the white paint needs to be improved. I got too many in straight lines and it looks kind of stiff. On Kana, I think I might have gone a little bit overboard with that black ink outline. I should have used less, especially around her neck, which looks a little bit too stiff now. Well, that's what experiments and practice is for. I find doing fan art is a really good way to improve because it allows me to focus on the painting and techniques and not on designing the composition or the character. It's a much faster way to get more rounds of practice for applying the colors and finding the techniques and the style you like. I usually find switching between fan art and originals brings me much better progress than, say, just purely doing one original after another. Especially when I feel I get to a bottleneck and stagnate in my progress. When I just started reading this book, even before I had this idea for filming this video, this book really got my creative juices flowing. So after just a few pages, I just had to sit down and draw something. I chose this one to work on as this is the classic pose of eye. Also, the coloring is representative of Oshinoko and Yokoyari's style, very vibrant and saturated. First, I did a quick sketch with a brush pen. This brush pen I used had very little ink left, so it got this dry brush look all over. It's actually quite nice, and it's easier to control than a fully loaded brush. After I finished this page, the brush was completely dry. I quite like the brush tip, so I will look for refill cartridges for this. Painting both eyes doesn't look as good, although I quite like the simplification of the frills. So I grab another brush pen and give it another shot. This time I kept one eye and one hand, and also painted a little bit of her bright yellow color. 
I quite like this one. I think it captured the essence of eye with just enough details. So let's bring this idea to watercolor and see if I can improve the look. Because I have done the ink drawings, I know what I want to keep for sure is her right eye and left glove. I appreciate the super detailed drawings and how the artist can come up with them and give them perfect forms. But I personally prefer the minimalistic look using broader strokes and spontaneous patterns. So I feel I can ignore other things and keep only these two features to say that this is I. Of course, the pink collar, the frills, and the tongue sticking out all contributes to this as well. In this book, other than full page color illustrations, there is a draft for the first chapter of the manga. It has comments and thoughts from both Yohoyari and Akasaka. I'm sure this will be very interesting to read if you have the manga to compare to. There is also a really sweet short story at the end of the book. I won't spoil it. It's only three pages, but it has a little surprise ending, and it really made me smile. A Chinese brush is better for painting defined lines with more nuance, since that's an important element of Chinese painting. I learned a bit of Chinese painting when I was a kid. I guess there's still a little bit of muscle memory of how my wrist should move. This is another technical skill that I should try to pick back up, because it just gives me the freedom and agility when I'm creating those outlines. It just flows so well. I can do outlines with the usual watercolor paintbrushes, but it just doesn't have the same feeling of um, confidence. By the way, I really like brushes, especially softer ones. Since I love seeing paint smoothly flowing out from my broader strokes, it's hard to describe, but I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about. Let me know in a comment. Oh, and I also learned not to be stingy on paints. Always squeeze out more paint and make it thicker. It's such a simple thing to do to get more vibrant colors. I mean, with pan colors, especially those small pans, it's hard to melt enough paints off. And if I'm not patient, I end up with the mix that is too watery. So the lesson is to use two paints for when I want more vibrancy and leave pan colors for smaller areas. After doing all these paintings, there are quite a few things I learned. I always like vibrant and saturated colors, and seeing how well the art turned out in watercolor, I now have more confidence in trying different and less conventional color combinations. The simplification used to be something difficult to me. I always naturally end up keeping too much detail in my art, especially if I design my original drawings. It's a process of adding more and more details to it, and in the end, I should simplify it, but I don't want to waste any of my effort in designing them, so I ended up keeping everything. Sometimes, less is truly more. I should also think about the symbolism of the art, like how Yokoyari uses a lot of stars and the universe as metaphors for Oshinoko. And those elements are used over and over again in different characters, so the whole collection is very cohesive. I think in the future I will try to incorporate things I like as elements in my paintings. Not just physical items, but also maybe elements with less of a solid form. This is something I need to ponder and pay attention to in my daily life, and it's part of knowing myself better. Anyway, this is all thanks to the book and Yukoyari Sensei's art. 
I highly recommend this book. I hope you like this video and inspire you to try something different. I'll see you in the next one.